Hello guys, welcome back to Photographics Academy. All right, so today we're going to be learning how we're able to retouch this picture right here on my screen. So I'm going to be giving you step-by-step -step guide from start to finish everything we did, including the skin retouching to the background swapping. Thank you so much. And let's quickly get started. And the beautiful part is that you're also getting the backdrop for free and you'll also be getting the action. Of course, if you've been following us for some time now, this particular action we are going to be using have been there. You will get access to it. So all you need to do is just make sure you join any of our WhatsApp communities and you will be able to get here. So without wasting much of your time, Let's quickly get started. The first thing I'm going to be doing is to crop the image. So I'm cropping using my four by five. I'll just crop it like this. Yeah, I'm going to turn off my content at work because I don't really need it to work now. we we'll still use it later. Press enter. All right, so once you have that cropped, you can now make a selection of your object just inwards like this then right click and go to select inverse right click again go to fill go to content aware so what this does is that it quickly gives us a very clean background feel and we are good to go so let's quickly get started with the retouching i'm going to load up my action load up my frequency separation so because it's a full body image i'm going to be working with Gaussian blur of three, yeah, that will give us a good one. We'll press enter, and our frequency separation is ready. So we'll just go down to low frequency copy, pick up our mixer brush tool. I'm going to be working with wetness as at 33, and my flow at 31. Then we'll just quickly go around. Yeah, we'll take care of the blemishes later. Don't bother. Okay, so we'll just do a very quick retouching because I wouldn't want to waste a lot of your time. Okay, so we are going to be working with our frequency separation and of course our mixer brush. So one thing about uh, doing your frequency separation is, is that you should make sure that you are not doing so much. So that your image doesn't end up looking plastic. We'll vary it. Okay, so we'll move over to this side. Just a very quick one. So this is the beauty of having a very good makeup artist. Plus it does get practically half of the job done for you. you don't have to do so much again. But how fine the makeup is looking. Okay, so we'll just come over to the body. Alright, so quickly let's adjust her dress look at her tummy so you can as well use your uh, frequency separation to fix this as well so you just go around a little and if you flatten that area out to so change that uh shape yeah let me show you the before the after so you see the way we're able to even give her something that looks like a flat tummy not necessarily a flat tummy no all right so here then Make sure that you're able to fix this as well. Okay, so we'll come down to the lower part of the dress. Yeah, do the same thing. So what I'm doing with this dress is very simple. You know the rule of frequency separation says don't paint your shadows into your highlights and your highlights into your shadows because it's going to distort the look of the image. So what I'm doing on this dress is that I'm painting the shadows into the highlight and the highlight into the shadows. That's how you can be able to fix uh, rumples on your dress. So you just have to find the perfect uh, Gaussian blur that will see retain textures. And after textures are retained, you are good to go. Just fix it. So you see the way all those foldings on the dress have all disappeared. I don't think we need to do much time here because it's going to look really, really weird. But we are good with what we have here. So let me do an overall before and after so you see what we've done. This is the before, this is the after. Then back to the face. I'm noticing some blemishes, which I'm going to use my clone stamp, staying on my high frequency layer. Then I'll fix it. Yeah. 
Okay, we are good. So just take your time and do this part on your image. The more time you spend doing this particular thing I'm doing now, which is taking care of those tiny, tiny blemishes, the more smooth and cleaner your image is going to look at the end of the day. So I'm not going to spend all the time doing this because trust me, we'll still have a whole lot to cover. I think basically we are good to go. So let's quickly get straight to the background. But before we do that, let's do a very quick dodging and burning. So I'm just going to load the two of them up, pick up my brush, make sure your flow is as low as three. So let me just keep mine at three. Pick up a white brush and just paint over the image. So I'm going to start with my dot, very simple. Make the highlights brighter, make the shadows darker. Then pick up your bone. I'll just use my bone and go around her face because she has more like an oval face. So we'll put some burning around it so that the shape of her face can be very much accentuated. All right, so to the nose, I'm not going to burn here because the light is obviously coming from this side and it should be able to take away some of those shadows. So just make her darker. Make her darker, darken her up a little. Then back to my frequency separation, I notice our eye bag line. So we'll just go and fix that as well. All right. So let's quickly get started with the background. So I'm going to max all this up. Let me just flatten them all together and get straight with the background. So the next thing we are going to be doing is to separate the object from the background. Now, how do we do that? Very simple. Make a duplicate of your main background. So this becomes a background copy. And make sure your properties are loaded up. If it's not, you just have to look for it. Come to your windows, locate your property and turn it on. Yeah, here it is. Press OK. So this is what it's going to look like. I want to have it inside here. Then if you scroll down, staying on your property channel, you will notice that this quick actions contain remove background. And that's what we're going to be using. So we'll just keep the part of selecting object and making those refinements so just click on remove background and allow photoshop to do its magic all right so i think it's done beautiful all right this is good now the best thing we need to do is to now have our background on a separate layer without our object on it and how do we do that we'll still make a duplicate of our background the main layer then hold your control to load the selection of the object on the background copy right click and go to sorry make sure you are staying on any selection tool so you can find your s band yeah then go to select sorry go to modify go to expand you might need to zoom in to see how much of the pixels you are expanding with so we want these lines to be just slightly out of her body you wouldn't want to push it out a lot so that your shadows don't get affected Especially where you shoot with a very soft light. So come down to modify, come down to expand. We'll check what five is going to give us beautiful. And like that shift, yeah, that our shadows are still properly intact. So we'll just right click, go to fill, go to content aware and press OK. All right, so once it's done, you can press Ctrl D to deselect. Let me show you what we just did. You see, our object is gone. Although we'll see how her shape pulling up here but that is absolutely fine you can just pick up our patch tool and take care of that then we'll come down to the main background floor and make sure we don't have blemishes down here very very important i will show you the reason later yeah just take away the black point in the middle let me turn on my object to make sure that is not the shadow. Okay, so I'm going to leave that because that is obviously her shadow. Look at that. Yeah. So we'll just leave it there. Now, the next thing we want to do is to clean up the background. To clean up the background, make a duplicate of the background. Go to filter, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur. So I'm going to be keeping it all around 200 because I need it totally smoothened out. Then press OK. Once you are done doing that, go back to the other copy you copy it, press Ctrl U, desaturate it, do the same thing to this one, Ctrl U, desaturate. So that we'll have a clean white background. So what we're doing with this one is just for our shadow reference, nothing more. 
just to restore shadows at the end of the day. So now it's time to load up the background we are going to be working with. So let me go get our back. Right, so this is the background we're going to be working with. So I'm going to unlock it, pick up my move tool and move it over to my objects. Position it over her and just scale it in. Yeah, just like that. Scale it into it looks realistic. So we'll position her somewhere around here, but I still need some part of this uh designs on the wall to show up so i'm just going to reduce that scaling a little yeah press ok so we are halfway done the next thing to do is just to blend the whole thing together and make it to look realistic so to do that first thing you need to do is to change the blend mode of the background to hard light yeah so the reason we have to change to hard light just to restore a little bit of the shadows when we start getting it back you understand the reason i'm saying that then we need to darken the background down a little so we'll go to our curves and bring the brightness down so it doesn't become too bright and become brighter than our object so we'll have it here but even at this our object is still not standing out so another thing we can do is to introduce an extra layer of light behind that will give the illusion that the object is standing away from the background so the light is not touching the background evenly to do that we we'll just pick up our rectangular marquee to stay on the background and make a selection of the area we want the light to be somewhere around here then pick up my curves and just darken it down just like that but the only issue now becomes that the line is very definite so we can't leave it like that of course we're working with a soft light and even if it's not a soft light it can't be this definite in that shape so what do we do simple click on the curves icon then click back on your mask the property is going to come up so you just feather it a little feather it until it's totally smooth yeah something like that so this is now the before this is the after so this is it so see the way just that extra layer of light created the depth that we need in this image now it's time to get our shadow back so what we'll do is that we'll go to the mask of the object. Sorry, the mask of the background, not the object. Yeah, here. I will try to restore the shadow we still have here. So to do that, we'll just move this particular one over here. Or rather, we'll just create a mask for this. Pick up our brush. Make sure you are very low, somewhere around three. So I want to introduce, reintroduce the shadows of this area so that the moment I'm bringing it back from here, it's going to start reflecting here. Yeah. Oh, check it. Okay, have the shadows back. So open up our background, create a mask for it. And do the same thing. I think this is too much. I have to reduce it. So we'll have our shadow back. If you feel the shadow is not definite enough, there are other things you can do. Maybe like create an artificial shadow for it if you know how to do that. Let me show you how you can do that quickly. But I think I like the shadow I have in the object or in the background but let me show you how you can create your own shadow so you can just double click on it and go into your blend if go to drop shadow or rather staying on the layer you can come and click on this effect here and just click on your drop shadow and it's going to automatically give you a shadow so right click on the shadow and go to create layer and boom you have your shadow on a separate layer now you can easily play around with that shadow and position it wherever you want it to be something like this so you can just position it wherever you want it to be and even create extra depth so let's just try using it to create extra depth for our image since the light is falling from right to left so looking at the way it is now i'm going to hold my control and just bring it down a little press ok then blow it out just like that yeah I need it to look very soft, but very visible there. Beautiful. Then press OK. Of course, we are reducing the opacity. Very good. 
So this is the before, this is the after. Just to give you that extra depth in the background. So the next thing I notice I need to do is to darken the hair of my object. Her hair is supposed to be black, but it's not black. So I'm just going to darken it down. All right, so once you are done with your selection, go to your curves and just bring it down a bit. Yeah, we are good. Now it's time for a global color grading. Very simple. We are not going to be doing much. The net, the first thing I want to do is that I want to get the whole scene to be warm. If you look at our background, it's warm, but our object is looking cool. So we need everything to be evenly warmed out. To do that, I'll just introduce my photo filter and select the warm filter. Very simple. So you can decide to reduce it a bit. Press Ctrl Shift Alternate E to create a stamp visible layer for everything, then go into your camera roll. So once you're in your camera roll, of course, we'll have to increase the vibrance a little because I need the reds to start popping out. Then a little bit of the warmness here. You can check what your highlight is going to give you. I think I want it more highlighted. Then go to your effect and add some vignette effect to it. Very important to draw the whole attention to the center. So we can go into our color mixer, go to the red channel and darken the red a little so it doesn't look too bright can even make the red even more reddish so that the color keeps attracting your eyes to the center you can check the hue and see if you can push it towards a, a wine red look and we are good to go press ok have our global color grading so we'll just match everything up and apply our last effect which is our done for you the touch action just to bring everything together and give us that final look I'm just going to load up my done for you with touch action. So I'll collapse this, open up my done for you. Go to done for you, press enter. So we are working with somewhere around three. Press OK. Beautiful. Of course, this is too much, but I sincerely like it. So I'm going to just drop it down maybe by 40. Let's keep it all around 40. And we are good. This is the before, this is the after. So one more time, I'm going to match up, go back to my history and create a snapshot. So let's take a look at everything we have done. This is the image on community Photoshop. This is the result we got at the end of the day. Thank you so much for watching. Do make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you subscribe, make sure your notification bell is turned on. So you get notified every single time we drop a new video. Until then, see you on the next one.